down thy boat! Hello everyone and welcome to the Canadian Redneck Channel. My name is Dave and today we're continuing our 414 etc series uh, back half videos. We have our 414 transmission rear end here. Uh, we've already removed the hydraulic lift cover and the rear axles. We've taken our PTO shafts out, uh, which we would need the rear PTO shaft out for this job to have enough room to move our bull gears. And that will be the next job, is fishing the bull gears out of the differential case so that we can pull the uh, bull pinion housings out. The one for the left side comes out pretty easy because there's lots of room. Yeah, as it is right now, that won't come out of there. Um, once I get the other uh, bull pinion housing loosened up and make a little bit of room, it will fish out. Or if you were do going to replace your brake seal on just the right hand side, then you would need to remove the axle housing on that side so you can get the the bull gear up out of the case. Uh, for our purposes, we'll be able to fish things, move things around a little bit, so I don't have to take the axle housing off just at the moment. These brake housings have a ring of bolts around, around the outside, and we've taken them all about with the last one. And then they just slide. Ah, oh, yeah. And I forgot the brake adjuster here. There we go. And that falls off. And the brake disc. On these 414s, there's an early and late brakes. Uh, the early brakes used a smaller disc. And as you can see by the brake housing, they're perfectly round. The later brakes uh, had a bigger disc and they have a bunch of flat sides around. So that's how you can tell which brake disc to order without taking your tractor apart. These are the late discs, the bigger discs, and these are the early ones, the smaller discs. The bull pinion shaft on the right hand side has the differential lock operating rod come through the center of it so that makes it a little more challenging to remove. This is a retaining collar for the spring that uh, disengages the, the differential lock and so we have to remove that. It's on a small lock ring or circlip underneath it here uh, so we have to push it in and then remove the circlip and usually uh, it's a good idea give the collar itself a couple little taps with the hammer to loosen it up. There we go. And you can see the dirt kind of showed up around there. So that means it's pushed the collar on the shaft a little bit. And then we use uh, locking pliers and a screwdriver to remove the lock ring. Locking pliers to get a hold of this collar and push it in. And then the screwdriver to grab the circlip or lock ring and wiggle it out of place there. I'll try to move the locking pliers so you can get a view of the lock ring. There. It's hard to see, but there it is. There it is. You can see the little lock ring there. There's quite a bit of spring pressure there. And I'll give that a little push in, uh, try to hold it, and then, <laughs> usually it helps if you say the few of the right words while you're doing this too. <clears throat> and then I get the screwdriver in behind it, and uh, slip off. Okay, <laughs> I've got the end of the ring started, so I will just kind of spiral the screwdriver right around in front of the collar, and that will hopefully, yes, fish the lock ring out. There you 
you go. I'm trying to get it where you can see it. Holy crap, it's right down here in my finger. It's just a little round spring clip. And then that collar comes off the end of the shaft. You can actually see the spring right here. And that was what was holding pressure against that locking collar. And then it's just a ring of bolts around the outside of this housing. Um, I'll take the ones on the left hand side off first so that we have a little room to uh, get the bull gear fished out of the way for this side. With all the bolts removed, there's a couple little ridges you can get your pry bar behind. And it will just pull straight out. Now we're not going to take it very far because we want it to support the weight of the differential while we're taking the other side apart. It appears as if this tractor is taking some grief. These are supposed to be um, threaded into the case itself. But on this side, I would say the holes got stripped or something of that nature and they have drilled through and put nuts and bolts. But normally these would be just uh, a threaded hole in the case, bolted tight to the case. And again, we got the bolts all out. Just grab that edge around the uh, brake housing. I guess bull pinion housing. There we go. There. Get the other bull gear out. Then you lift the differential and fish the left side out first so you can shoot, get that shaft worked around. The bull pinion seal is in the case here on the inside, so you have to take the shaft out and It won't just come right out because this bearing race on the inside. So a couple of taps and it'll knock loose. And the bull pinion seal is in here. If you need to replace it, you just knock it out, put a new one in. Then you can replace your shafts and put the rear end back together. That completes our video on removing the uh, bull pinion shafts and differential from a 414, etc. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave that in the comment section below. Any requests for something you would like to see, you can leave that in the comment section below also. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you everybody for watching. Please give me a hit on the thumbs up button down there. Uh, subscribe to my channel. And as always, have a great day.